Good morning, everybody. Thank you all for being here today and for coming and joining us for this time of worship. Is it warm enough for you? It is in here anyway. Last Sunday morning, we had a little trouble with it being warm enough in here, but this week we're doing all right. Thank you for being, coming and being with us today. It is a beautiful day and a day for us to be able to come together and celebrate what it means to be a Christmas people. Today is the last Sunday of our Christmas season. It is Epiphany Sunday. It's the Sunday when we look and, and study the coming of the wise men to Bethlehem and what they discovered by following that star. Today is the day that our Lord has given us. I'm glad that you are here to be part of this time. If you are here for the first time, there's a card in your bulletin. If you will fill that out, take it right outside to the Welcome Center here. We will have people there and they have a gift for you and have a Starbucks gift card in it. And as long as several other things, we hope that you'll go by and pick up that bag and, and take it with you. We also hope you'll go to this number right here, text WELCOME, and by doing that, you'll not only get a welcome from the church, but you'll also get some updates on some things that are going to be happening in the next few weeks, and we would love for you to take part in that. So go and text to that, and it will get, keep you updated on some things that are going to be going on. Next Sunday morning at 10 o'clock, we'll be having our class, BBC 101, and if you are interested in knowing a bit more about our church before you join it, we would love for you to come to that. We had coffee with the pastors today, and we had five people in there, had six on the way, and one got a text that he had to go to work on the way down there. But we had several people who came to it. If you would like to come to the class, we would love to have you, so please remember that for next Sunday morning, and know that you are welcome to be there and invited to be there. This is a day for us to gather together and to worship the Lord. As we come into this room, our focus turns not toward each other, but toward God himself, and we offer the very best that we know how to offer for what God is offering to us. Let's join our hearts together in a time of prayer. Lord, let your spirit be with us as we gather here. <clears throat> Invoke that spirit upon our souls that we may know beyond any shadow of a doubt that we are your children and you have come here to meet with us. You want us to be with you and you want to have relationship with us. You want to celebrate with us everything that it means to be the people of God. Let us bring our best to you here this morning, O oh Lord. Let everything that we say, everything that we do be something that will honor you and that will lift your name and that will bring happiness and joy to your soul as well. Help us, O oh Lord, to know that when we walked through the doors of this building, that we were part of your church and that you were waiting for us. Come, Lord Jesus, and celebrate with us. For it is in your name we offer our prayer. Amen. Let's stand. Let's sing together. Good morning. Good morning. I am Todd Millsaps, and I'm the associate pastor at Blacksburg Baptist Church. Good to meet you. Most people call me Todd. I'm also Dad. Sometimes Christian calls me Pops. Diana and I never use each other's names, so I will not tell you. It's none of your business what we call each other. And if anybody does know, just keep it to yourself. This was a dangerous moment for Todd because I know what they call me, Joe. <laughs> when I was in trouble growing up, I was Jeffrey Todd. And in high school, I was JT. There's power in a name, you know? There's power in a name. But folks, not my name and not your name is to be ever, ever praised or exalted. Amen? But how about the name of Jesus? How about Messiah? How about Emmanuel? God with us. It's still Christmas at Blacksburg Baptist Church. And, and we'd love for you not only to stand with us, but to sing with us and to exalt the name of Jesus, Messiah, Emmanuel. Jesus, Messiah, humbly you came to the earth. Your life is our salvation. Light of the world, our peace, the Father's gift of love. Joining the angels, singing the praises you're worth, we gather to adore you. Glory to God, our King, the hope for all the world. Sing with us, you know this. 
What did the heavenly host proclaim? Who would have thought this tiny lad would hold all power in his hand? Tell me what did they call him? What did they call that little bitty baby? What did the heavenly host proclaim? Who would have thought this tiny lad would hold all power in his hand? Tell me what did they call him? hearing his name lifted up and exalted. He deserves that. Will you join me now in a litany of trust, please? Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. Lead us, Lord, in the way of life. Help us to trust you, Lord, as we search for your guiding light. Lead us, Lord, in the way of life. It is so easy for us to trust ourselves instead of acknowledging that you, O Lord, are the straight path that leads to life. Lead us, Lord, in the way of life. Today we come to you, our Lord, our God, and we trust you to be the light that guides our way. Lead us, Lord, in the way of life, that we may see the light that leads to the love that changes everything. Pray with me. Oh, gracious Father, thank you for a new day. Thank you for Epiphany Sunday. May we see the light today. May we hear something new, see something new, learn something new. Or perhaps may we relearn something that we've known for a long time, but in such a way today that our, our hearts follow what our head knows and we get serious about following the light that you provide for us along this path. 
Thank you for forgiving us when we go our own way. Thank you for pursuing us and searching for us and bringing us back home. <coughs> Lord God, help us to run to you today, not trying to hide at all, knowing, trusting, that you know what we do not know. And you certainly can do what we cannot do. We celebrate today that for us so many things are impossible. But for you, with you, all things are possible. God, help us to believe that today like a little child believes. Help us to trust you as a little child. <coughs> with absolute dependence, as if our life depends on it. May we find ourselves helpless before you today and then find our help to be in you. Lord God, when we leave this place, help us to still be a Christmas people telling the good news far and wide. Help us to look close like the person right beside us or in front of us and not miss those opportunities for good news telling. Father, help us as we leave this place today to carry with us the Christmas joy and hope and peace and love, love that changes everything. Jesus, help us as we pray. Join me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. On this last Sunday of the Christmas season, as we look to the Epiphany story, I want to read from Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. One of the most familiar stories in the scripture. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who was born the king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and the scribes of the people together, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. And so they said to him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for this it is written by the prophet, By you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not, but you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had secretly called the wise men, determined from them what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the young child, and when you have found him, bring back word to me that I may come and worship him also. When they heard the king, they departed, and behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with his mother, with Mary his mother. And they fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented him, presented gifts to him, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And then, being divinely warned in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed for their own country another way. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy God, we ask your blessings. You have already offered them because you have given us this word. Now let this word speak to our souls and help us to learn from it that we might become more like you and that we might become the vision of what this season should bring to the world, not just during the weeks of <clears throat> Advent and Christmas and Epiphany, but every day that we live. Come to us today, Lord Jesus. For it is in your name we offer a prayer. Amen. Back approximately a thousand years ago when I was in the process of becoming a law enforcement officer, there was a good bit of training that went with getting that job, but one of the things that they really drove home to us back in that day was 
we had to know the difference between a valid and an invalid search. If you did a valid search of someone or their premises, you could use the evidence that you had gathered to make the case that you needed to make. But if you did an invalid search, it didn't matter what the evidence was, it didn't matter what the crime was, it didn't matter whether the person was guilty or not. If you did an invalid search, you couldn't use the evidence and you couldn't make the case against the person using any evidence that you found there. In other words, we had to know the difference between a valid and an invalid search because if you given the right circumstance, given the right situation, that could mean the difference between life and death. We had that happen once with an individual who had clearly committed a murder in that town that we were in and yet the search that was done was invalid and the evidence was thrown out and we could not make the case. It meant the difference in life and death and could have meant it again. What's the point? The point is if you want to be successful in the life that God has given you, you need to be able to distinguish between a valid and an invalid search because sooner or later we're all going to be searching for meaning in life and whether we find it or whether we don't is going to be determined by whether we're following the light that leads to the truth or whether we're just off on a wild goose chase somewhere in our existence or to put it a different way, a huge part of life is truly about searching. And if you don't believe that, think about this. Both the Old Testament and the New Testament start with a search. Each one of them begins with a search story. One of the first stories in the Old Testament is about God searching for us. God created Adam and Eve. The word Adam means male human. The word Eve means female human. In other words, God created humankind. Why? Because God wanted to have children and he wanted to have a relationship with those children. But... Instead of having a good relationship with God, Adam and Eve decided that they were going to try to do life their way. And their way really messed things up. And when it did, they not only felt guilty about it, but they felt ashamed of the choices they had made because we humans know the difference in right and wrong. We may pretend that we don't, but the truth of the matter is most of us know the difference in right and wrong all the time. Adam and Eve knew the difference in right and wrong and they made the wrong choice. When they did, they became afraid because they had betrayed perfect love, so they tried their best to hide from God and when they did, God went on a search for his children. Genesis 3, 8 and 9, Adam and Eve heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord among the trees of the garden. And then the Lord called to Adam and Eve and he said, where are you? In other words, God refused to let his people hide from him. He refused to let them hide from their sin. He refused to let his children just go out and try to make it on their own. When we decided to try to run from God's love, God came searching for us to bring his love to us again. The Old Testament begins with God's search for us. The New Testament begins with our search for God. This passage of scripture that I just read to you a minute ago from Matthew 2, 1 through 12, this is the story of, of the wise men coming from the east to, to search for the Christ child that they knew had been born in Israel. The story of Adam and Eve is the story of God's search for us. The story of the wise men is the story of our search for God. And if you put these two together, they're supposed to remind us that our relationship with God is a two-way street. It's the story of God wanting a relationship with us so much that he is absolutely unwilling to let his children run away. It's also the story of our needing a relationship with God so much that, th that we're willing to go search for something that will fill that need. But unfortunately, we humans are a lot more like Adam and Eve than we are like God. So when we start feeling like something's missing, when we start feeling like we need to find something else in our lives, we don't usually go looking for God. What we usually do is we start looking for something else that will fill that void. And that's the story of the wise men. One of the first stories that we have about the Magi comes from the Roman historian Herodotus. Herodotus says that the Magi, Magi were part of a Persian tribe by the name of the Mideast. 
Somewhere around 550 BC, the Medes decided that they wanted to be the people who had power and influence in Persia. And so instead of continuing to be a tribe of priests, they became a tribe of rebels. The, the Magi started a civil war against the king of Persia. Thousands of people died in that war. When the Magi started to feel like something was missing in their lives, they didn't go to God to try to find the answer. They did the same thing that we do a lot of the time. They tried to do it their own way. They tried to fill their lives up with power or prestige or position or through sex or bad relationships or adventure or alcohol or drugs or whatever it is that we happen to choose to try to fill up that void whatever it is that we use to try to stimulate our souls just enough to give us the illusion of meaning and the illusion of independence, that's what the Magi did. We humans are notorious for trying to convince ourselves that we can do it, we can find it, we can make it on our own. It never works. The first reference that we have of the wise man is not in any way a story of wisdom. It's a story about a group of foolish men who were trying to find meaning and purpose in life through power. If we can just be the royal family of Persia, we'll have it made. We'll have everything that we need. The Magi were not trying to find God. They had a longing in their heart. They tried to fill it up with the wrong thing. They started a war because they thought power was the answer to their problems. But unfortunately for the Magi, they lost that war and they lost it big time. And not only did it lead to intense suffering for their tribe, but from that day forward, that tribe became a, land, a, a tribe of nomads. They had no land to call their own. They traveled all around the desert and they basically became a band of wandering gypsies who spent their time studying the ancient prophecies, not only of their culture, but of the other cultures around them. And they also became astrologers. They became experts in the stars. And when they put those two together, what they discovered was an ancient prophecy that came out of Israel that said that the Savior of the world was going to be born in Judea, and the sign that this child had been born would be a new star that was shining in the sky. In other words, the Magi gave up on trying to find meaning on their own and they started looking to God for what they could find, what they needed to find. They studied the ancient prophecies and they waited for that light to come. And lo and behold, one night they were standing out in the desert looking at the sky, something they did every night of their lives. And suddenly they saw this new star shining in the darkness. And when they did, they started following that light because they had prepared their hearts ahead of time. They knew that that star was going to shine sooner or later. And when it started shining, they knew what it was because they were prepared. They were prepared for the truth when it came to them. And they were then willing to go on this very valid search to try to find the source of that truth. Today is Epiphany Sunday. It's a Sunday when we focus on the wise men and their search for Jesus because they saw the light shining in the sky and they knew they had to follow it. The word epiphany literally means to see the light. It's about having a moment in life that changes everything for you. For those magi, that epiphany was that star that was shining in the sky. For me, the epiphany came in the form of a family tragedy. Now let me say right up front, I don't believe God sends tragedy to us. I don't think that God sits up in heaven and he says, I'm going to take that person's baby because I want them to learn a lesson in their lives. Satan would do that kind of thing, but God wouldn't do that to us. Jesus was God incarnate and he never harmed a person in the world. God, Jesus is not going to show up and harm us. I don't believe that God causes tragedy, but I do believe that God can work through tragedy to bring something good out of it. Romans 8, 28 says, For we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love Him. God doesn't send the bad things to happen to us, but in my case, my epiphany started when my uncle died in 1973. Uncle Walter was only 51 years old. He went to work early one morning because he needed to get some things done. When everybody else showed up for work, they found him lying in the floor. He had had a heart attack. 
Two weeks after his death, we went to church with my aunt to support her. And when we went there, I met this pastor that was unlike any pastor that I had ever known in my life. He and I hit it off right from the start. And when we did, I started telling him things that I never told anybody before. I started asking him questions that I had never really asked anybody before. And when I did, he did the very best that he knew how to do to try to answer my questions. If he had an answer, he gave it to me. If he didn't know the answer, he just said he didn't know it. I never met a preacher who would say that either up until that point. One day, I think he got exasperated with me and with my questions that I asked so many over and over and over again. When he did, he looked at me and said, Tommy, you worry too much about stuff that doesn't matter. Jesus loves you. That's all you need to know. If you'll just give your life to God, you'll find the peace that you've been looking for, and the rest of the answers will come as you go on the journey with him. Nobody had ever said that to me. and For some reason, that's exactly what I needed to hear. That became my epiphany that day. That was my star that was shining in the sky. So I gave my life to Jesus that very day, and I started following the star. And that's when I not only found the peace that passed all understanding, but the questions that I had had and the doubts that I had had in my heart, I found the answers by going on the journey with God. I'm still finding them. The longer I have walked with God, the more I have understood. That is the story of the wise men. They didn't know where that star was going to lead them. They didn't have a clue, but they had just enough faith to go on the journey because they believed that light was going to lead them to the Savior. So without knowing for sure where it was going, they acted on their faith and they started following that star. And sure enough, it took them to the place where the hope of the world was born. Friends, I don't know what your story, stories are, but here's what I do know for sure. If you'll have just enough faith to start the journey with Jesus, he'll guide you to the truth, and that truth will set you free. The entire story of Christmas is a story of how one person after the other either followed God in faith or they rejected God and that rejection led to death. But for those who believed, for those who were willing to go on the journey of Christmas, their lives were changed forever and every step they made from that point on led to meaning and purpose and hope Enjoy. For me, it was living proof that God keeps his promises. I had waited a lifetime for the hope of the world to arrive. And just when it seemed that the prophecy would die along with me, I heard the cry of salvation coming from, from an obscure little town. The only thing more powerful than expectant hope is fulfilled hope. It gave me permission to die in peace, but more importantly, it gave people everywhere the possibility to live with peace. He was a constant reminder that God does not make mistakes. I didn't believe that at first. Everything started out so wrong. People told me I was a fool, blind to the truth, too trusting for my own good. But deep down in my soul, I knew something special was happening. Something bigger than my fears. Something better than my plans. Someone greater than my doubts. He was a threat to my throne. My kingdom had been built by my own hands. And now there was a claim that a child had been born who would be known as the King of Kings. Not if I had anything to say about it. So I went after him. There was no way I would bend my knee to another. A child at that. If he wanted my throne, 
He would have to do what I did. He would have to take it. He served as the pathway to wisdom and knowledge. Some have called us wise men. Nothing could be farther from the truth. The king used us like puppets to carry out his devious plans. Yet in the midst of our blindness, God gave us a beacon of light, a heavenly compass that pointed us towards an incomparable gift containing the depths of God's riches. To think that we brought him gifts seems so laughable now. He was the gift to us. He was the reassurance that God could still use anyone. As an innkeeper, I had welcomed many weary travelers before, but none as tired as that young couple. With no room to offer, I was ready to send them on their way when I noticed the woman was close to giving birth. I offered them the only place I had, a manger. It seemed like such a trivial act at the time, but I soon realized that I had played a part in something much bigger than myself. God had chosen me to. He was the answer to every question I had ever asked. Why me? How could this happen, you know? What will people think? My journey began with confusion and, and fear. But slowly, with each passing day, I, I came to see the beauty and the blessing of God's presence as my son grew inside of me. It was a strange mixture of human limits and divine love, culminating in that one moment when I saw his face for the first time, and I realized God was with us. It was the good news we never knew existed. Every day was the same day for us. When you guard sheep for a living, any distraction is welcome. But that night was more than we could have ever hoped for. The silence gave way to the sacred. The simple gave way to the supernatural. The bleeding of sheep gave way to the crying of a child. For a world in need of joy. For the earth in search of peace. It was such good news that we could not help but spread the word. Savior had been born. Holy God, you have come to us here today. You come to us over and over and over again. These seasons that we have just celebrated are reminders to us that your story is a never-ending story that the cycle continues over and over and over again. We tell this story to those coming behind us with every faith in the world that if we will give our hearts to you in faith, it will continue to change things. God, it's easy for us to become desperate in life, for us to become so desperate that we start searching in the wrong places, looking for the wrong answers to true questions that come into our minds. We are so tempted to give our loyalty to things that do not deserve our loyalty and will never be able to bring the answers to life that we need. Give us the courage and the wisdom to search for you today, O oh Lord. Help us to have the ability to know that in you there is life and that life can be abundant and filled with joy and it can bring us peace. Give us the wisdom to come to you today and to... And to be able to say, Lord, come into my life. I have looked everywhere. Now I'm looking to you. Fill my life with your love and with your grace. Forgive me for looking everywhere else first before I have come to you. Come into my life and give me new life from the inside out. And help me to have the courage to go on a journey with you. To follow in your footsteps and to believe that you will take me where I need to go. So that I can become who I need to be. Come, Lord Jesus, and give us the courage to become your disciples. 
And help us to be a Christmas people, not just in the Christmas season, but in every season of life. Because that birth that came to the world 2,000 years ago is still being born to the world every day. And the answers that the people found as they journeyed with him are the answers that are still coming to us. Come, Lord Jesus, and make us more like you. For it is in your name we offer a prayer. Amen. Once more child in a land of a thousand, one small dream of a savior tonight, one small hand out to the starlight one small savior of life Ooh. one king bringing his gold and riches one king ruling come here today and you have prayed that prayer that I led a moment ago and you want to give your life to Jesus for the very first time, if you'll come to the front here, we'll help you with that. If you want to join this church and be part of this fellowship and be on mission with us, we would like to have you. If you'll come at the front at the end of the service, we will help you with that as well. When we leave this room, we're going to be going into a world that thinks Christmas was over a few days ago. Christmas is never over and we're called to be a Christmas people. Let's go and tell the world about the joy that came to the world 2,000 years ago and let's live it fully every day that we are out there so that the world can see a valid surge and to know what comes at the end of it. Now may the Lord bless and keep you and make his face to shine upon you and give you peace this day and every day now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you, everyone. Thank you for being here today. Mm -hmm.